they have a letter of interest in for a new lease of that area. And if you all remember, a year ago you passed a resolution with a recommendation um, to lease short term. Um, and so that's going before the Planning Commission. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to remember to, when I finish the packet tomorrow, have Tony maybe send that to yep. you guys. Is short that, term, if have, you're have you right. talked to Shoreside at all? Because I know they've. So Shoreside has submitted a letter saying that they're interested in that area. Yep. Um, so that's kind of the whole deal there. And um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Because I tried to get from Shoreside like a conceptual drawing or something, and they. Well, I won't do it. <laughs> Back of a napkin, nothing? Nothing. So. Because I mean, if they really want it, I mean, they got to get serious on it, you know. So, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they submitted a letter of interest. Yeah. Multiple times now. Yeah, it doesn't so. take much to draw on a Google Earth image, though. Yeah. Well, I, well lines I and say short size was a letter, unless you got a different one than I did. It was more of a concern of not doing a long-term lease with Forest Service. Yeah, I yeah. would say the vibe was more. <laughs> If there's a rebuild, reconfiguration of that area, and especially looking with the Science Center getting out of that area, you know, we certainly don't want to be stuck with a Forest Service lease sticking right out. in the middle of thumb sticking right. out. Right. Yeah. And so I think there's ways of, you know, depending on what happens and how the lease gets negotiated, I think there's ways of at least getting something in that lease that says, you know, we'll, if there's a large infrastructure project, you know, that reopens the lease up, we're not gonna get stuck mm -hmm. having to build around this dock that comes out in the middle of the, that, the North yeah. Harbor, so. Yeah, yeah, because Shoreside was just more of a, they didn't want to, them to have a long, long-term long lease, that was kind of the, yeah, I would. It say, wasn't really a letter of interest. Like we're going to do something in the next two years or five years. It was just the letter was recommending short term. Right. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. It seemed like a year ago or so they were talking and they had it all lined out pretty much, and all of a sudden they pulled back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. I want to get back on topic with a new business. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Leif. Uh, item C: General discussion on dock use and maintenance. Page five of your agenda. So, believe it or not, Mr. Jones sent me some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Others did too, but probably the winner. <laughs> uh, the one was no plowing on the docks. Um, approaches and uh, the slime that grows on the bush on the wood dock over on the north side. So I did contact a few harbors. Um, Southeast, they, they do use a, the way I understood it from him was they use a snow plow on their dock that doesn't have pole rails, which that's understandable if, you, if your docks will handle Let's push it. push it off the head. Which community? Sitka. Sitka? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so that makes it a little easy because if you're snow plowing, just acting on top of the pull rail and just throwing ice on the pull rail. But um, as long as you don't drive, it's, it. it's certainly something to think about as we talk about new harbor design. And oh yes, yeah, yeah uh, I agree. Yeah, the um, pull rail is nice to tie up to. They must have big cleats every so often. Or, I only been there once, so I don't remember. It's been a long time, so I'm trying to think what you do if you don't no, have any pull the rail. The same, so five harbors, so. Yeah, well, they're Elias and Harbor. They've got like two harbors that are really one harbor, but they call them two right. different harbors. Yeah, and then they've like got they yeah. yeah, and then they've got A and B, and then they've got the Crescent Harbor, and then they've got whichever one the one is over by the airport. And I've always parked in the A and B or the Elias and Harbor, and they ran four wheelers on the one. The Elias and Harbor, I was, that's where I saw it. And it looked friggin' sweet. Mm -hmm. Nobody's dumping it. Them. What was, there's no bull rail? No, there's bull rails. Yeah, so I, oh. I don't know. yeah. they just they push the snow against the bull rail. Remove the bull rail on their, on their docks, too, so I don't know. 
Like I said, I'd have to see uh, exactly like they did down here with them 12 by 12s in a ferry. Yeah, no, they just ran down. The main float just run down and then turn around and then run back. And it was like uh, one guy cleared the whole float structure in a, an hour, you know, because they had a lot of floats. Versus, you know, here it's like I watch them out there all day. It just kind of looks miserable. Yeah. It just looks <laughs> miserable. It looks oh, miserable to me. <laughs> It is. With That's the blower, <laughs> with the blower, you're saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I talked to them about that, and then um, pressure washing the timber docks. As you can see, the amount of time they spend doing it. Six weeks for two employees to do their timber docks to pressure wash them. It's a lot of time. A lot, and then and then they apply sealant to the concrete mm -hmm. docks. Um, which they do, some of the companies do recommend you do that every so often. Um, talking to Homer, Harbor Master Homer says he doesn't like his name in the paper for pollutant. He doesn't <laughs> seal this. Which I understand if you tip it over, or, you know, I mean, you know, and then on the wood docks, they don't, they don't seal. But they do pressure wash to keep the layer of slime down. Yeah. Make them a little less slippery. Homer and Sitka, I mean Seward, use that brush to remove snow. And Homer said, I hadn't talked to Seward, but that's where Homer got the idea of the, using the brush to remove the snow. Homer said it does a great job in those wood ducks to keep that slime down, especially in the wintertime. Yeah, I'm going to agitate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see where it works. If you have yeah. bull whales, how do you brush it and throw it over yeah, the rail? Yeah, well, it throws it, I mean, it doesn't throw it real far. It's kind of a good thing because you're not taking a chance of breaking people's windows on their yeah. boat. But it does so clear a rail. It'll throw, you can throw them anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees, you can turn them. So it, it'll throw it over. So I haven't seen the far, I haven't there. seen the brush in action. Is it on a four-wheeler or is it on no, a... No, it's a walk behind. It's a walk behind. They make four-wheeler ones too. Yeah, they do. Hard part would be turning around. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys remember a cupcake going in the water. I wasn't here for that. But yeah, well, that's, what I was, <laughs> that's what I was wondering about those without bull rails, how they kept their machines from, when you turn the plow that snow off, you drop it off the edge. <laughs> so yeah, when I talked to P&D and Matthew's Lumber about pressure washing off the dock, they recommend never, ever pressure washing. Use a hose spray. But not anything real powerful because the our ducks are probably cold water as it is. But it just embeds it, it everything. It. And um, they say just take water and scrub it. Or take a hose, scrub it. We right. do our wood docks that's exposed once a year mm -hmm. in the summertime. And then, you know, by this time of year, they're a green slime again. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah, lot of man, it's a lot of manpower and it, it comes right back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just never gets dry enough here. Yeah. But I mean, if that brush helps, we're gonna buy one and try it out. Use it on the other side, on the wood dock. And yeah. If we like it, we'll kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. And if we like it, then we'll go to well, you know, get New Harbor. Think about something else. And then New Harbor on the plants would supposed to be the same same kind of docks we have now. There. That's my opinion. But I mean, I thought that was part of the plan for yeah. five minutes. I think doing the concrete floats was kind of what everybody was thinking. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But with instead of wood, of plastic. What's that? But instead of wood, do plastic. Yeah. Yeah, you HMW rubber rails. Yep. So. That was my understanding. So I did make sure. Yeah. No, that that's been a while. I understand that too. <laughs> that. Forget. And sealed foam instead of just. Yeah. And then sealed sealed foam flotation. Yeah, it'd be like yeah. we all encased by the. By the concrete. concrete. Okay. But like BMI, if they. Bellingham Marine, their docks are doing solid 60 foot fours now for fins of So we wouldn't have the whalers, the wood whalers, oh, I see. unless you wanted them for a rubber. You know, but you wouldn't have us holding the two the four they, sections together. Right. You know, no, that you know. breaking. Yeah. yeah. So the, everything they do now is uh, if that's what you want, solid fours, which is the way to go. Yeah. Sweet. So the other one was uh, a topic that is been talked about once or twice. <laughs> dock yeah. use on the loading dock. You brought that up. Mike brought that up. Was, what was the? Which is well, it's got to do with the dock use and 
maintenance, unless you want to talk more on maintenance stuff. I think at some point we should touch on the, I don't know if it's maintenance, but Why not? rebuilding, but that can be after we're done with maintenance because we have some ongoing rebuilding projects um, in the harbor. And uh, some of that is good for everyone to weigh in on. So I guess whether we're throwing good money after bad or how, <laughs> how much we should try to keep things working. Um, but anyways, I guess if we're done with maintenance, you want to know um, about so the removal? Or? So last meeting we had a discussion about three-stage dock and cranes. Um, I guess, do you have an update on kind of where those went and what has happened since then? I can tell you uh, nothing's happened. I have submitted the recommendation. Council has due to budget concessions and everything else, and they're, they're not going to have two more. Last meeting they didn't have, and I don't think they have more than 20th. It's supposed to be on the next council meeting, our recommendation, you buy one crane, rebuild a crane, and then work on that. Okay. So, um, we have plenty of boards for decking. So um, the other one, I know some uh, shoe sheds got pilings. Yeah, that's that's the one. not a hard part is to get pilings. That's not a big deal. Because that's the one that's slippery. You get out down towards it where it's underwater all the time. And on a three stage you dock? Step on that, you, right. you end up going somewhere. <laughs> Sometimes you get stuck in the bobcat, dude. No blowing no blow <laughs> down there. Oh, no. <laughs> the tide's not coming in too quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that's the recommendation is going to council. Like I said, there's a second memo to uh, Susan and Sam. And uh, so hopefully they'll. Bite off on it when you get that paperwork in. Be moving on. Um, I did, and I forgot to. I should have put it in the packet. I forgot all about it. I don't remember the price. Jerry did look at some prices on rebuilding one of the cranes. Um, guess news, if I remember right, somewhere in that twelve to fifteen thousand. No, rebuild the crane. What's a new one, Ron? Um, well, depending on how big you go, there is a company in Kodiak. They were talking, they were cheap. I mean, you sent it to me on the Marine Exchange or whatever it mm -hmm. was. And I emailed them. Jerry got, I think Jerry got a hold of them too. And uh, as a bare bones crane, without the controls, was 25, 30. Mm -hmm. It was like 30 grand. Yeah. Plus for shipping. But I mean, what, what kind of crane was that? It was a 1,500 pound working load. Um, single stick. So. And it was galvanized, right? Yeah, or you could get it, but yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he sold them basically galvanized. He was putting them together in Kodiak? That's the way I understand it, yeah. Uh, Arkansas Park. At least it used to be when I was there, but I think that's the same guy. Are doing like a spray galvanizing coating? Yeah, or? I don't know exactly how he did it, but I talked to him briefly, um, and I think Jerry got a hold of him on the new one, and then deciding on what we would do for controls. You know, remote controls or you know, one that's away from it or something. But hmm. and then I know Jake got a quote, and that was a that one. Is that North Pacific Crane or yeah. North Pacific Crane? Yeah, uh, I think it was five thousand pound two that's stage. A, that's a big one. My only issue with that, and Jake looked at it. He looked at it. Is that there is going to be some beefing up of that dock? To, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I've been worrying about. Drop the crane since we got the new pumps on the cranes that we do have. They have so much; they're so fast and they move that uh, you watch and they're kind of move. You know, I'm, I'm worried about the I mean, wear on our dog. Has that been recently? That was this fall, the last time. Jerry went and slowed him down. Oh, he. Oh, nice. I'll have to go. I'll, I'll go. It, but yeah. I know he told me he slowed him down. Because awesome. He put stops on him, and we didn't want to be breaking the ring gears. Mm -hmm. Start like slapping them. So, yeah. 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 Nice. So. I'll double check. Awesome. He said he was slowing them down. So you can like, basically get them rebuilt for less than half the price of a new one. Yeah. Right. The parts that wear aren't the main structural parts. It's just the rams and that stuff, right? The valves. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The pins and all that. Pins, I guess. they all, I mean, everything. Shivs, they all wear out. Uh, so, um, I mean, we have that. I mean, we have, once we got our, I mean, 
We have to inspect it every single year. I mean, we do work on them, but hopefully now that we got stops on them, we won't be replacing the hoses on them all the time. So. Yeah. Oh, God, sometimes you go down there and you're just yeah. trying to ease it around to take the pretzel out. You know, it's like, oh. I know right after uh, Jerry put the stops on this one, we put a new cable on it and a headache ball on it. Next, uh, three days later, someone had it completely rat nested up in the winch and everything. On the cable? Yeah, same thing on the loading dock. Someone had that. You, know, you set the headache ball a little ways from the hook. Headache ball was right tight up. So when you pull it tight. <laughs> you know what happened? You need to block it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you probably know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we actually ended up bidding uh, big UHMW cookies. Yeah. Stacked them with a big industrial spring in between mm -hmm. so that when they yeah, suck it up, do, yeah. yeah. I think Homer had them on theirs like that. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little bungee, a little yeah. spring there. <laughs> and yeah, on one of our cranes, and the rest of them are going to get it as soon as they have to replace the whips on them. Mm -hmm. The plan is to rebuild one and then buy one, or to rebuild one and then this. Yeah, rebuild and buy. Yeah. Buy a new yeah. one and rebuild one. Yeah, and move one up. Up to the You get all the buyers, the big buyers that are too big to be in here out there. Yeah. yeah. They're already tearing up that other dock, a new one. That's what I was, was bugging Tony about. It's it's just for how much money we just spent on that dock, it's totally unsustainable with what we're charging the people to use it versus what it cost us to fix it. And my best guess by looking at it is, is we'll have to do a total replanking in like eight to 10 years or so at the rate that it's wearing right oh, now. Oh, God, I haven't been down there that fast, huh? Well, if you... If you watch when they're they when they they're you know they're trying to unload fish as fast as they can and they're hauling full totes of fish and when they drive across that as fast as their forklift will go, there's like a wave of energy that gets pushed and like you can actually see the planks like moving and it kind of pulls the nails out of them and just wears them off. And then the fork or the skid steer comes along in the winter and grabs those. Yeah. <laughs> grabs yeah. grabs the... Most of the wear I noticed was before the snow even ever. Fell. Right. I'm just talking about that nail head sticks up just a little bit. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Try not to do it as much anymore with the skid steer because of that. Grab yeah. a nail. Yeah. We'll what we can with the plow truck is got the feet on it and then just pick the piles up and push them over. Right. Yeah. Like when they do those with the plow trucks, then they'll drop the feet down. So yeah. they, yeah, nice. Yeah. Leaves a nice crust of ice on them yeah mm -hmm. it just kind of compacts <laughs> yeah. so it's like the slickest ice yeah breaks free yeah like real good yeah. this year especially it yeah. seems like everything is ice yeah i would i would say that um you know as soon as we can get that crane stuff done put a kibosh on processors using the in harbor cranes period the, 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 no ice deliveries, nothing. Just, I mean, maybe direct marketers and some of the smaller buyers yeah, can get a permit. Of, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of took a lot of the facilities away from a lot of the users of the harbor, the way it's, things have worked out. The yeah, I've had years. to, I've had to sit there and wait for two hours before, just because Cam Two's giving out ice. Yeah, yeah. especially if you're waiting in the same opener and yeah, yell at open at the same time. You got ice there, and you don't get to that dock. It's not supposed to be that way. Like, you have had many talks with them, both of them. They're that supposed to take a break. Needs, that crane, I mean, granted, you're not going to let them take up two hours either. But if it's just a load of net on, yeah. or like I said, to get you know, one coat of ice from someone else or whatever, then they should be like, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's the way it's supposed to work. They yeah. don't have sole custody. Of yeah, I had to go over and load a net and I had to argue with it a little bit to use a crane to swing it to grab mm -hmm. my net and put it on the dog. I said, you're not even in your way. This, you're not yeah. standing there dude, waiting for yeah. your boat. Yeah. But if you want to have control up. of a dock and a crane, you can build one like all the yeah, other I processors have. Yeah, next guy in line. Yeah. Oh, that worked. <laughs> that. That thing's still got to go. It's going through council and. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Council wants to buy. I mean, it's up there. They signed the contract. They didn't get that. So, yeah. All right. Any more discussion on uh, dock use or dock maintenance? I like the brush idea. Be cool to see how that yeah. works. Yeah. So we'll get one and see how it works. 
Yeah, I see them for cleaning for cleaning parking lots. That's basically yeah. what we're talking I've, about, right? I've it got one of those in the front. Yeah, work. yeah this is just a It's like a snowblower, but it's just got to yeah. take it's all that grass. Take so all, I think it's a 26-inch brush. Or it's take brush. all that brush, the grass and the, all the sea otter wastings laid all over the dock. You try to lay your net on. <laughs> That's natural monskin. They work <laughs> really good. Attraction. The one thing I would say is if you want to use them to do it like a cleaning, um, You'll probably want to do it when it's raining out. Mm -hmm. That's It'd just personal color experience. Color it's really dusty. Yeah. Like if you're going to use them on the concrete floats, do it when it's raining. Yeah. You have a skid steer mounted one? Yeah. Hmm. They work good. But I did have one other thing that I didn't put on the list. And, uh, no, that's too bad. <laughs> um, so I also talked to Jerry. We're going to be putting um, the fenders in along on the city dock. Uh, camels. We're putting those back in. Um, oh, here at the end. Yeah. Of the, river. So, the old Coast Guard dock. The city dock. The yes. ocean dock. Oops. Yes. Okay. So okay. <laughs> one more time, I'll make a pitch for our flyer. <laughs> Our little trifold, welcome to Portova, Port and Harbor facilities. This is the city dock. This is the Coast Guard dock. This is the ocean dock. This is North Hill. I, the Coast Guard's Hill. lost. They tie up at the T dock. They don't. They're, they're all screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is the the dog. Yeah, that's what it always was. The old harbor, the old new harbor, the new old yeah. harbor. Have it all clearly laid out. We're going to do that. The only place we're not going to put one in is right at the crane. You don't want to push it too far out. Um, we all just, I mean, that's what Bob figures it. With the buyers there want to get as close as they can. So, and that's not a big deal. Yeah, Bob those are laid up against it. Fenders are kind of the, those dull camels. Yeah. Sorry. Unless are you put not a very on them. <laughs> friendly for Bob pickers. Right. Yeah. Hard to so, tie up to one. Yeah, it's not a big deal for them to lay up against a dock. It doesn't bother what the big boats do. So, no. yeah. Yep. That'd be interesting in a reach. See, one of them that doesn't want to float anymore. Yeah, that one's not going back in. <laughs> um. <clears throat> All right, uh, moving on to old business, a uh, grant opportunities discussion. So in my Harbor Master report, it talks about the brief we had on the build grant we put in. So we assumed that we were just not competitive. Um, we were considering maybe not even putting in for the build grant again because we just assumed that, you know, big, big place to get. The airport gets it, cold storage, you know, stuff like that. It's a big transportation grant, and we're not considered. The harbor for us is not our transportation. We were talking we needed a ferry terminal or something like that or an airport, then it would be different. Um, so we had the debrief with the lady that is in charge of looking at them all and part of the committee, I guess. There were seven, I think seven or 800 entries. We made it into the final round, which was amazing. Out of like 70 other places, something like that. Which I was really surprised we made it anywhere. You know, after kind of really looking into that grant program. He told us that if he put it in for it, we have um, our cost benefit analysis, probably one of the things that hurt us the most. Now it wasn't real, what they considered accurate. Um, she believes that we could, if we clean it up some and do a little bit more on that, or have a company actually do that cost benefit analysis, we will probably do that. I mean, unless something huge just comes up and they, you know, but. Um, so we did, I can't remember the name of the company. We talked, we're going to have a meeting with them, talk to them, and it's going to cost us 10 grand or so, um, but do a complete cost benefit analysis, how it benefits to our group. Everyone, and try to get that cleaned up, a little more muscle, muscle in it, and commit it again. You know, so, so there's hope there. Um, cool. Uh, that's that's the big enchilada. That's that 25 million. Uh, granted, we may not get 25, but we may get 20 or 15 or you know whatever. But it's, <clears throat> you know, um, so Curtis Fish, Fish, Fishner. He's our special projects guy that was hired. Um, he's been working a lot on the phone, talking to these people, NOAA, EPA, 
all that on grants. So we also have a meeting with NOAA on getting them to do some work for us, whether it's uh, they do our um, all our environmental stuff for pretty much free. And that was one other thing in the bill grant. We had all our permits or our at least new our environmental issues written down and we knew exactly what they were, that would help. So those are two things that really were lacking in our, our proposal. So if we can get those down and get that in, you know, I mean, fingers crossed, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of money, money in the state to get, so if we can get federal money. Well, it's in Dunleavy's budget right now, isn't it? Our $5 million? Yes and no. It's in the budget, but it's not technically in the harbor fund. Oh. Yeah. John Bittney, our the lobbyist, feels that it's a very good chance. If he was a bad man, he's bad it's going to be. Uh, two years in a row, though, we've lost. We've won, but lost. So that's open. where you say we were selected for the state matching grant. Yeah. Yeah, so, we missed like the two years in a row. Right. We're the only one that's put in for a tier one. So, um, but yeah. There's been no money it. both years, so. They have to fund it, yeah. Yeah. Right. Originally, that money was supposed to come out of the uh, yeah, vessel fuel tax. That's what they talked about, but since the state can't earmark anything, Someone pulls it out of somewhere else and it goes away. So yeah, so we're looking at that and along with other, like I said, even NOAA grants, EPA grants, whatever we can. Have you contacted the the Exxon Valdez trustees or whatever they're called? That was one, I haven't talked to Kurt, so he was gonna get in touch with them. Because they're paying for the Science Center. And then I, I was reading an article about how they were trying to give $90 million to Rasmussen Foundation to manage yeah. for them, and that got denied. And so they have to basically do something with it mm -hmm. or manage it themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he's going he's to call on that one and see if it's even something that could be used. Yeah, I don't know. That's what NVE was trying to tap into for their Shepherd Point Road, say, saying it's an oil spill response port, and then they were going to get the money through there. But we are already an oil spill response port. We have mm -hmm. the largest oil spill response fleet in the state. Right. So why don't we just apply for it? That's the way I look at it. Well, I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Get money away, we'll take it. But it's definitely something also that we should stress uh, in, in the build grant or any other thing we're looking at is that the amount of trained, yeah. I mean, ready it, response vessels. It has been enough, both the packets. Yeah. Okay. How many vessels we have and everything here. So, and then you know, we have we don't have a deep water port, but we do have a cutter here. We do get freight, and then we do have an airline that runs twice a day, so, which is a big deal when it comes to even oil response. So. It's the only all weather airport in the region. Yeah. So, uh, getting money to replace our aging facilities segues. <laughs> Yes, yeah, segues into something Andy and I were talking about the other day. So uh, some of these uh, fingers and docks are are getting separated through wear and tear and time, and it's it's a a question of do you want to throw good money after bad? If we're getting a new one, do you want to put a bunch of time and energy into fixing something up for one year, two year? It's got to take, you know, especially, I guess we were especially looking at some of the things on G-Float where we have these big boats. We have, a, what is it, a 60-year-old dock, did you say? I no, think it's 40 plus. That was one of the original ones, yeah. though. So it was one of the original. It's the oldest. It's the oldest dock. Yeah. They pulled it out of there and put it there to tie up boats until they built yeah. the harbor. And uh, looking at the joints, basically it's where the fingers join in that is our biggest problem and uh, it's in pretty rough shape. So uh, piecemeal, keep it together. We don't have space for these big boats to go somewhere else. We're fill up, pulled up on the North Harbor and uh, so we just can't say go to another stall. So it's, it's a, I guess our inclination, if I will, is to uh, 
try to fix them as efficiently as possible and keep them working because we don't know how long it'll be. Maybe it'll be five, ten years before we get a new one. We don't know. You know, you got to. But um, be that much time before you get a new one built, probably. Unless we get funding. Right. Even if you get funding next year, it would be a year, a year out from that. Or next, this fall. It would be a year out from that before we get most likely. If we got funding. Anyways, it's something for us to be aware of. Is, is, uh, I, I think we could be getting people complaining we're throwing good money after bad. They can't. It's hard to fix it. Patching. Not much to scab onto. Um, it's all worn, worn pretty bad. <coughs> How much would it be to just replace G Float? I think it was around a $3 million site. And that's without doing the drive down dock portion. Well, that blows all our savings. Blows our mod. You no, know, per se. I mean, every time we do some engineering on it and then. No, not grant money. We got, you know, they, even if we just have a million, we want to spend a million either. We, we take a loan from the city or we bond to or whatever. Yeah. Well, or at what, a small grant. how long does the city have? I thought we're coming up on the deadline to issue those bonds because before, before it has to go back out for a new vote. We well, yeah, understood it wasn't a sunsetted thing. It's just, it's just a, we got permission to do a bond. Yeah, I thought they had. A certain amount of time. I didn't see anything in that, but maybe. Yeah, I don't remember it being time frame on it, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I just think that's how most bonds work once yeah. they're voted on. Because we haven't taken the bond, so. Yeah, right. you know. yeah. If we were to, say, pull the trigger on issuing those bonds and replacing G Float before we get the other money, would it still count towards our match? Have to go to the total project of. That grant, you know, because when we're submitting, we're submitting for it, we're going to put it in for that whole plan. Yeah. yeah. For what's defined in the yeah. project. Right. On that deal, too, if we do get that five, you know, the state part, and then at some time, a year later, so we get another one, like for 25 million, or is that, we're going to make sure that the five billion we use for that part matches up with that. Forty-five million dog somehow, so you don't have to tear that your five million dollar dock around down <laughs> two years after you build well, yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, that, and that was the plan on, on at least on my side of opinion is that if you're going with like Bellingham Marine, you're going to continue to go with Bellingham Marine, so you can connect right into it. I mean, I mean that's that's, a, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. So you didn't destroy we, your brand new. Good, we, I think we've had really good service out of what they gave us last time, and they've had nothing. A time to make it better. Mm -hmm. Sounded like they're doing like a fiberglass in the mix, and yep. they're less crumbly, and the edges are crisper and hold better. And is the Old Harbor uh, from Bellingham Marine? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Back before they knew what they were doing. And so they, they do the floats, like for the boat launches and everything like that. Then for which. Like the north ramp that no, we were just getting. That's no, Matthew's that's lumber. Oh, okay. Yeah. They only, uh, Matthew's only does wood. They did our, the North Harbor, right? Yeah, that's all Matthew's lumber. That's Matthew's. Yeah. I just want to make sure when we build something, we don't take it down and put a new one in. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I, I really feel that the value is in the concrete floats over what we have at the North Harbor. It just doesn't seem like they're going to. 25 years from now, it doesn't seem like they're going to be yeah. as serviceable as what we have over here. Even trying to work on that when we do a light bolt and everything, I mean, it's just so engineered for pieces to lay where they lay for wood. It's like you can't move anything. You can't just be like, that's a bad place to let a light bolt put it. No, it's built into that pocket. You know, I don't know. You know, in certain areas where it's drier, yeah, that's probably the greatest thing in the world. But you know, when we pulled apart that old, uh, Floating dock at the north ramp. I mean, that thing not that old, and it had rod already in it. And everything. Yeah, it was. You know, it, really, I was and unimpressed. All, it's all tarred uh, up and stuff too. Well, the decking and the wood under it is pressure treated, hmm. but it's you know inch and a quarter plywood under that fiberglass decking, and that just it never ever dries out. And that yeah. was all delaminating and everything under there. Hmm. So, yeah, not that. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, with Mexico, the dock and the port down there was just like docks down here. You meant center runner that would look exactly the same dock. New ones wouldn't have a center runner in it. They won't? No. They don't do that. Uh, Spelling can't, I mean, I guess you could request it from them, but uh, for the most part, they have tunnels already in them, poured into them, and <clears> they run their cables down, and they have access covers you know, every 50 feet or whatever. Well, oh, for snow removal and a lot of other things, the center runners are kind of yeah. a pain in the butt because they screws sticking out. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and they move and then they move. That yeah. edge drops out. Yep, scared to step on some of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, when you're doing work on them, they, well, now, maybe in the beginning, the little, you try to unthread the mm -hmm. things and they just the spin thing. around and the whole thing comes up and you, that, um, and, and that goes with the grass and all the, mm -hmm seagull poop that gets in there and makes that concrete freeze thaw and rot and push and all gets kind of crumbly so yep. i think getting rid of the center and they're slippery they are yeah. Yeah. yeah um is there any talk about if we if we stand a chance at the build grant application is there and we have the five million bond. We have some money of our own, and we have potential five million from the state. Can we combine it all into a project that might meet their criteria better and get us a better chance at the full twenty-five million? You know, say, hey, we're going to do a thirty-five million dollar project. You're only going to pay for twenty-five million of it, and we're going to get this much done. It's going to benefit even more. Would that be an idea? I'm trying to remember if we, I thought we put that in there that we were willing to put some skin in the game. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we did do that, but I don't know if it helps a whole lot. Um, the state likes to see that, of course, yeah. the half. So I mean, um, but we could also take that five, we could get the 25 and match it. Then we wouldn't have to take a bond. You know, if we want to just do a 30, $30 million, million dollar you know, project. We got the 25, and start I just, line. yeah, and I just want five. We could take five from the state match it and not take a bond at all, which would be really nice to be able to do that and then we wouldn't be in debt for the next project, which is going to be the North Star Park. But would the taxes <laughs> go away? <laughs> no, we... Well, we need to grant for the pioneers and that too. It was kind of, we used, had the federal government come in and do a lot of the surveying and all the engineering on it for nothing, So, but that was still credited to your grant. I just really want to see us do that sheet pile with the the new M float and then the, you know, the alternative four B or whatever it was that P and D worked up for us two years ago. Oh, that would be sweet. Yeah, it would. I agree. I, with the drive down dock and. Yeah. On Max's idea, maybe we can get some historic reconstruction funds and rebuild it to its original <laughs> glory. Like, yeah. We don't want to rebuild it to where it was. The trouble with that, you got to use, they start wanting you to use the same materials and stuff that, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not so fun. They yeah. don't make it. what we want. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I guess the big one would be if if you could call the I can't remember if it was Evos or who the trustee council the one, the place that is funding the science center they gave them twenty million bucks and uh, I mean the science center is awesome but I didn't like the idea of giving it to I, I don't understand that benefiting some guy in Nome would get. The people who are actually affected by the spill as much as maybe a new harbor would affect us. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Seems to be happening. <laughs> I think you probably get 15 or 20 million dollars from them, maybe. Have you looked into the Corps of Engineers grant process? That's about a 30 year process. You know, what I got back from them is we don't do grants. But if we want to build new breakwaters, a different story. Well, that's for that. Remember that one uh, was three years ago and Clay, we were talking about Trump money that never showed up and we moved the breakwater. Yeah. Is that something we could apply for a Corps of Engineers grant for? Probably. But that's, like I said, that is a, as you know, I mean, Valdez has been doing it for 20 years and finally got it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got to start now so we can get it 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I don't know. They, they basically, the voice was not real. Yeah. Not easy to deal with. Well, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. 
I just, you know, I really like that drawing too, where we had the sheet pile on the outside out mm -hmm. in that 20 foot channel. Oh, yeah, so all the crabbers could tie up and come and pull their boom truck right up there or whatever. Welder and truck or, yeah. and then they could, you could have cam two buying fish out there instead of out on our wood pier and, you know, if more of those, to plant. more of those, if more of those trident crab boats would come and tie up, and their crews could go drink in our bars, that'd probably help too. <laughs> I think the skippers like them out there anchored. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like the <laughs> I just want to see as much, you know, money come into the economy as possible. Um, obviously, getting our existing float structure is priority number one, but I do want to look to the future as well and. I think that having an expanded harbor basin would be beneficial. Easy just throw it all the way over to Spike Island. And, I'm well, all for it. Yeah, you'd have trouble. You better especially have having that, especially, I mean, the, the, the utility of that, expanding the South Bill and having that, um, that frontage along that, it's a nice channel. For most of the bigger tenders and things like that, there's plenty of room to come in and turn and lay there. And, uh, and be head into the wind. Yeah. North wind. It's, and it, yeah, it's a, anyways, that would be great. That one was, well, we're talking like, what is it, number four? That was like a 75. Yes, 50 to 75, yeah. <laughs> I think it's 72. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Only talking millions. <laughs> Tens of them. <laughs> 0.75 billion, huh? <laughs> but I think that included all, all the floats, all the uplands, all the pavement, all the electrical, you know. There was even like a Coast Guard dock. Yeah. There was a Coast Guard dock in there and a fuel dock in there. There was a lot of stuff that made that. It was, I think, just the Harbor Basin expansion and the uplands was, and it was still expensive, but I think it was like 38 or 40 of that 70-something. I thought, mm. Yeah, I thought it was more like 50-something. But not have Definitely anything out there at all. Yeah. yeah. But I just see it as, well, we're kind of two block. We have no uplands left to sell. Can't bring any, you know, <laughs> can't bring any more businesses into town because there's nowhere to put them. And uh, our, I mean, our floats are, aren't we at 100% capacity or we could be if we had more floats? We got room on the little ones, but not as far right. as the big ones go. Yeah, yeah, we're. Well, I mean, we never got to a hundred percent because the little ones along the head doctors are empty. But yeah, for the most part, we're full every year. I mean, within definitely full on the big boats. Remember, we're talking about cutting L float in half. Mm -hmm. That would be the plan. But can a guy go in there now like that without doing anything with a thirty-foot bow picker, or would it be too? Well, the the alternative four for the build grant that. Opened all that up. No, but, but I mean, right now, if we open that up, and one of our 30 foot bow pickers have room to tie in there. Now you only have 20 foot docks, so that's what that makes it yeah. a little difficult. Plus, some of the, where you're at. Some of the 26 footers. Now you even know if you have enough room to even back out of your stall. Yeah, that would be spot the problem. Really at low tide, you'd never get out of yeah. in some spots. Or yeah. some spots. That's but what that I was wondering. That, that toe comes out quite a ways, but yeah. it's even like over where you're at over there. Well, yeah, that Mark, toe that comes out there. I know Gordon Lipscomb was on number one there where. He couldn't get out. He had units. He was stuck until half flood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now, we couldn't just cut into it because all the cable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just wondered if that would make a difference. Oh, that much difference. Yeah. There's a lot of smaller yeah. small pickers. I mean, we could use stalls for everyone, but the big stalls, 50s and 60s, is where we really could use a lot of them. Yeah. Most, most of all no, pickers can definitely pull. Definitely to rebuild the ones, new ones. Would be nice. Uh, the, but yeah, and the, the, the know, little boats are bigger, and the bigger boats are bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even the even the thirty foot stalls would make them long. Mm -hmm. you know, to take the bigger bow pickers because they're much more bigger. Yeah, yeah. I was just and thinking also if out of the water a lot more, <laughs> yeah. a lot more wind, a lot more sail on them. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, it's like we never even applied for a state one because we didn't have our ducks in a row, mm -hmm. and we finally got our ducks in a row. We applied, boom, approved. First mm -hmm. year, they didn't fund it. That sucks. Whatever. Just the fact of the matter is, we got approved the first year we applied. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, now we our second year in our build grant, and you just had great feedback. Yeah, I mean that, that sounds real promising. Sounds mm -hmm. promising. So that's awesome. But for seven years, we were talking about a harbor. We never even bothered to apply for anything. 
and uh, now it's like, well, we know there's a core project for, uh, you know, for doing breakwaters and stuff. Valdez got it. Took him 20 years. Mm -hmm. I, it just frustrates me that we haven't even tried to apply. You know, I guess that's one of the things that has always kind of irked me is it's like, well, the worst they could say is hell no. You might as well throw in an application, even if it's not all the way complete. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have to spend a bunch of money to have an application filled out. Same thing with like the Evos money. I don't know if anybody's even asked, but like the natives ask, they get it. Science Center asks, they get it. Why haven't we asked? Mm -hmm. You know, so. <sighs> yeah, It'd be nice to see some. Especially I don't... since we are a. Yeah, we're an oil spill port. Yeah. Oil spill response port. Even if we have to change the sign and say. We're an oil spill response facility. <laughs> you know, whatever. You want me to make signs. <laughs> I just the number of people in town that are trained and the number of boats that are yeah. kept. It's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. It might even be the largest in the country. No. As far as oil spill response, number of people in one port, number of vessels in one port. Yeah. I think the number of vessels would be the largest. We're probably pretty close to all the people. So, big yeah. boats that haul a lot of people. True. Yeah, but <laughs> for a lot of boats that are certified and go through that training. Yeah. Know. I'm sure for near shore to be. I just, you know, if we could get 20, 30 million from the core and put in the breakwater, even if it sits there empty for 10 years before you can get floats put in, you so know. It was also creating a lot of upland space. That's the, too, yeah, you could, time. you could have all the businesses, you could have another, another ramp over on the outside you could have all the tenders tie up there, there was a bunch of benefits to that project that's why i wasn't sure if maybe including some of those in with the build grant would give it even more of a i don't know yeah. if it score us higher yeah. i just right sometimes it's easier for people to jump it on to something that's bigger than instead of oh you're just replacing board. what you already have there's really no benefit there but if you're all of a sudden no we're adding 300 stalls and all those uplands and we're going to be able to put in two more fish processors and park 30 crabbers or you know whatever be maybe it would help I wouldn't say anything wrong about looking into that for the for the for a breakwater moving. Yeah. Up. Even if if you do get it moved, it's there. You know, you'd always build into it. Yeah, and I, I don't. Maybe the maybe the build grants the wrong venue for the breakwater portion. But if yeah. you could apply with the core and get the breakwater so covered by them, and then the build grant covers the floats, and maybe you don't put in the concrete and the uplands and stuff yet. Just have it. We don't need a nice paved road. You know, it'd be cool looking, but you don't need it. We paid $3 million for this one. I didn't think that was worth the money. But for that loop? Yeah. Three mil. Yeah, look how fast you go on it now. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I go by my office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, anything else for old business? Uh, one thing. We have, uh, we have a preliminary design to... Uh, reconnect uh, the worst the finger that's actually disconnected and floating around right now and it involves some hdp pipe about that big <laughs> do you have any uh lengths over there i'm sure we've got some lying around yeah okay i might give you a call and gra you know figure out how much i need but yeah, yeah it would uh his work has a bunch of big HDPE stuff that they use in their uh, net pens yeah, and stuff. So. Is, yeah, yeah. And well, his work does have a lot of stuff. They don't have a lot of stuff in town. No, I don't think they have any in town. Yeah, most Canary most of it Creek. went to Cannery Creek. There's yeah. a little bit left at AFK. We were just talking about that earlier. Oh, it's like a, an acre. I went out and looked at it. It's <laughs> amazing. But they have the little piece. So they have the main float structures, but then they had little float that did, all the, that did the planking. Else. Yeah. So they had the little, and I think my dad's got a pile of it out of his house. Was he? We rescued it. It's the thick wall. It's the, it was a Piswak net pen that um, we salvaged because it got washed up on the beach at Point Helen. And we went over and towed it off one year, like 15 years ago when I was a skiff man. He sent me up on the beach and I strapped a line to it and we towed it off and towed it home. And then Piswak didn't want it. 
<laughs> they said, keep it. We were like, hey, we rescued your net pen for you. Oh, uh, we don't want it. So we're like, all right. So he's got a pile of it out of this house. You can ask him about it. Okay. <laughs> They're transitioning from those net yeah. pens to a different system. And so there's going to be anybody that has HTP projects, especially for older stuff. Um, I did look at Andy was second there. Between the stringers that run down the speed load, just to run the rods, two stringers over, but you can't just pull them together because they're not that strong. And you put a spacer, HTP spacer in there, you know, run the rod through that spacer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We grab, we'd grab two stringers instead of just one. Not, is the outer one? Of wood there. We've done a lot of patching to just the outer one, and then even if the outer, the, it's just where it splices in, it's just it's too delicate and it's too gone. And if we go in and get the one in the middle, then it gives us something to tie to. But obviously. Probably like what? We look at like five by eights or something like that. It's actually remarkably up. lightly built for having lasted as long as it did. I have to say, and you know, the wood, yeah, I mean, some of it's gone and rotten, but it's surprisingly, for how old it is, it's surprisingly, and it was pretty lightly built. Mm -hmm. But I think those fingers, those big steel pilings in the back, those oh, yeah. fingers, is a, a, definitely helps. That's a big deal. But anyways, okay. Okay, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> we'll try it. And you'll have done more. <laughs> we'll lash them together and hope they, we get some money to fix them right, replace them. All right, moving on to uh, miscellaneous business. Was that your miscellaneous business? Anything else? Audience participation? No audience. Uh, oh, oh, there's one. <laughs> no. Not a surprise. Anybody on the phone? <laughs> this is the most interesting meeting in Cordova right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like how you added this in here, Tony. Uh, commission comments and next meeting agenda items. Uh, I guess we'll start with Max. I think it's fine to get more information this time because you know we haven't had a meeting in months to find out what's going on. But we're already been approved for the bill grant. I hope money goes in there. You know, I thought I heard it was in the governor's budget that he presented, but I don't know if you know well, as long as it stays there. But if it stays there, we should probably have a good chance at it. Uh, but as far as these other problems, I like the idea of rebuilding them cranes if you can get it for half price. And that new one would be great to give us an extra crane to work with, especially <laughs> rebuilding that dock. Sometimes you go tie up there and you got a bolt sticking out. <laughs> yeah. Some of the fiberglass bolts it leaves a good mark on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I hopped off there off Dean's boat. We pulled up and I was going to, because the ramp wasn't open to get to the truck. I made it halfway up the dock just dumping. <laughs> it's so slippery. That's miserable. I don't see why somebody doesn't get really hurt going off that and landing somewhere where they don't want to land. <laughs> but yeah, everything, that sounds like a good project too, get that rebuilt. That's me. <laughs> it felt like everything's going good. And so far, that brush deal sounds, if it works, that's real good too. That'll clean your docks at the same time it that you're blowing the snow, so that's fine. <laughs> that's it. Well, I I think the uh, um, I was excited to see uh, Dutch Marine Industries wanting to take on a more active role down there in the shipyard. Uh, seems like a good niche. Um, I also I I think to echo what Ken was saying about getting. Um, Getting, it, it looks like it, with the build grant and some of this other stuff that we have, a, maybe we got a better shot than, maybe there'll be some, a, a good timing to up our ask game, I guess I'll add that. That's my two bits. I think it could be. 
Especially maybe if there's economic, economic stimulus money they're going to try to get out at us, maybe. Maybe. Free up some money. We, we were looking for it last time. <laughs> <laughs> didn't come. So. Anyways, that's all I got. Yeah, just uh, appreciate having a meeting. It's been a while. Um, hopefully we can, so as far as the next meeting date, I'd like to have one next month and get an update on some of the stuff that's going on. I don't want to hold up Dutch Marine Industries you know, too long. Um, I know the council process can be abhorrently slow. So hope I wish them good luck and appreciate their interest. I'm a little nervous about another tarp shed connex thing. I'd rather see a permanent structure. Even if they needed us to lease them for like 30 years or something, so they could go to the bank and get a mortgage to put up the structure, I think I'd be willing to do something like that. I don't know if council would though. So it's not really up to us. We can just recommend what we want to see. Um, yeah, as far as the grant opportunities, that's awesome to hear that we were in the final group for the build grant. That's awesome. I think you're on the right track to clean it up and resubmit. Um, hopefully once that's done, maybe the guy that you're working with could look at some of those other ones. It'd be nice to do the whole enchilada and expand and everything. That would just be a huge thing for this town. I, uh, yeah. Um, I guess other comments under miscellaneous business, I missed it, but uh, is there any way we could fix some of the lights in the old harbor or in the north or south harbor? That'd be, there's like four lights. The in south the wall, harbor? In the south, in the AC side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's like, there's, that's the new harbor. Just think of the electricity bill. Yeah, there's like four working <laughs> street lights. One where I'm at blinks on and off all the time. Yeah. Work at all. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> I've uh, I've yeah, had sure. I've fielded a few complaints from fleet members over that. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, there's some really great new lights. Uh, we don't need them the all. Fire annex building out there. A what? A little annex fire building out there at Five Mile. Looks yeah. like a UFO when you drive by there. <laughs> um, yeah. As far as uh, yeah, next meeting agenda items, maybe uh, an, another update on the crane situation, how council votes. Um, I would like to follow up on the whole fuel lock in the harbor thing with Shoreside. Try to hold their feet to the fire. And I, I would really don't want to release that lease to the Forest Service if we can get them to put a floating fuel dock right where that Forest Service dock is. I think that'd be the cheapest and easiest for everybody. But, yeah. Well, they'd have to buy the dock from the Forest Service, though. Uh, rip it out and put a new one in. Well, yeah, well, we're doing that. But yeah. <laughs> Did they own the... They don't own the... Uh, we covered this before. They don't own the pilings that are attached to the land. What do you mean the pilings attached? You mean under the building? Yes. They don't own the dock. They don't the own building. the dock. They own the approach and the float. Right, and the building. But and the own, building. We own the deck. Oh, yeah. Cutter and did a building yeah. sitting on. Yeah. <clears throat> well, they'd either have to get rid of that building. Or sell it sell to Shoreside. <laughs> hmm. 50 years for a dollar is a little bit over, overboard. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's about it. All righty, Mike. Uh, my comments would be it was uh, nice to do the in-person meetings again. Uh, uh, good to get together and uh, I was excited. I thought it was uh, it'd be cool to have another structure down at the boat yard. So it's, I'm glad to see that uh, process get moving forward. And uh, uh, super excited about what Tony was telling us about the build grant there. It seems like we got a lot of hope to uh, go somewhere with that if we can adjust things a little bit. And uh, it's kind of a cool idea with the sweepers for the docks and stuff there. It'll be interesting to see how good that stuff works. So that's all that I got. Oh yeah, same as other people. Glad we're finally getting meetings back going again. 
getting back into the swing of things. Uh, and we got full attendance, which is great. Um, yeah, for the next meeting agenda, you know, some of the stuff that uh, Ken was saying is maybe ask around for some money, see if we can get doing that. And uh, land use, it'd be nice to take a look at that and get that updated as possible. And uh, for Dutch Marines, I think it's great to have them down there. We get another business down there and knowing how the way things operate, this is a prime time of year to get decisions made while everyone's here and not too busy. If we have to have a special meeting at some point to just make a decision, get things organized, I'd be totally conducive to do that. Yeah, me too. Instead of it rolling out to April or May or something and then we're out fishing. Months or, yeah, months yeah, go by. Exactly. So, and uh, beside that, I'd like to pass on to all the council members that uh, Tony Schnell's door is always open. Stop in and see him. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, he would love to field your next meeting. Next February. Next February. Okay. I'm, I'm here until the 20th. Yeah. <laughs> Warm weather. No, no, I already have uh, gotten done with that. Uh, I get to go up to Anchorage and oh, sit in okay. the doctor's office. <laughs> Not quite the same. No. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're well, waiting on uh, one more motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yay. Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. You've given us a nice.